Let's start. Today we will see, how to get the background location on an Android device that runs on Android version 12. In the manifest file, add these location permissions. As we are going to run this app on an Android 12 device, add this exported attribute in the activity tag, and set it to true. Now, at the app level build.gradle file, keep the compile SDK version, and target the SDK version to 32. Then, add these dependencies. Let's see the project structure now. Here we have the main activity, a permissions manager class, a location manager class, and a location work class. And in the UI, we have the activity underscore main.xml file, which is the layout of the main activity. Let's see the UI. Here we have two buttons, ask foreground permissions, and get background location. While getting the user location in the background. We need to ask for both, foreground as well as background location permissions from the user. Also, these permissions can't be asked for at the same time. The Android documentation says that, first, the app needs to ask for the foreground location permissions, and then it can ask for the background location permission. That's why we have used two different buttons over here, one to ask for the foreground location permissions, and the other to ask background location permission and get the background location after that. Let's see the code now. The constraint layout is the root layout. This is the ask foreground location permissions button. This is the get background location button. Let's see the Java code now. The permissions manager class is used to ask for the runtime user permissions. We have already seen the working of this class in one of our previous tutorials about the runtime permissions. The link to that tutorial is given in the description. So we will skip that part here. These are the imports. This is the main activity. These are the data members. Here we have two separate permission groups, one is a foreground location, and one is a background location. In the onCreate function, first, we get the instances of the permissions manager class, and the location manager class. When the ask foreground permissions button is clicked, first, we check if the foreground permissions have been granted or not. If not then we ask for those permissions. When the get background location button is clicked, first, we check if the background permission has been granted or not. If not then we ask for those permissions. If the background permission is already granted, we check if the location service is enabled on the Android device or not. If the location service is not enabled, we ask the user to enable it by showing a dialog. If the location service is already enabled, we call the start location work function. This is the start location work function. Here we create a one-time work request and then queue it to the work manager. This work will fetch the background location for us, which we will see soon. In the onRequestPermissionsResult function, we handle the result of the permission. An important point to be mentioned here is that, whenever we ask a user permission, the respective permissions dialog is shown by the Android system. But in the case of background location, no such dialog is shown to the user. Instead, the app flow and navigates to the permission settings page, where the user needs to select the allow all the time option in order to grant the background location permission. So when the user navigates back to the app, the on request permissions result does not get the callback with its respective request code, which is 200 over here. But instead, it gets the callback with the foreground locations request code. So when the user grants the foreground permissions, we will get that callback over here with 100 as its request code. Also, when the user grants the background permissions, we will get that callback here only. That's why we have to handle both foreground and background permissions results over here. When the permissions are granted, we check if the location service is enabled on the Android device or not, if not we ask the user to turn the location service on. If the location service is already granted, we call the start location work function. These are the imports. This is the location manager class. These are the data members. First, we implement the singleton object creation pattern, so that, only a single instance of this class would be present throughout the app life cycle. Meanwhile, we call the init function, which initialized some things. 
In the init function, we get the location provider. Then we create an intent for a broadcast receiver. Then we create a location callback that fetches the location data. When the location data is available, we send a broadcast. This broadcast will be caught by the location work class and it will update the location in the foreground notification. So basically, we fetch the location data in this class and send it to the location work class via a broadcast receiver. This is the create location request function. This function asks the user to enable the location service on the Android device. This is the start location updates function. This function will be called from the location work class in periodic intervals. This function will get the current location data. This is the is location enabled function. This function checks if the location service is enabled on the Android device or not. These are the imports. This is the location work class that extends the worker class. These are the data members. This is the constructor. Here, first, we get the notification manager service, then we get the location manager instance. Then we register a local broadcast receiver. In the do work function, first, we call the set foreground async function, which calls the show notification function. This will create a foreground notification on the device. Then, we set up an infinite while loop, so that this function will never stop working. We keep a sleep interval of 5 seconds. Then we call the start location updates function that gets the current user location. So this function will be called every 5 seconds forever until the user himself stops this, or the Android device stops this due to some critical reasons. This is the show notification function that creates a foreground notification. Here we call the create notification function. This is the create notification function. Here we set up a notification channel and create a notification. This is the update notification function. Whenever a new location data is fetched by the location manager class, that data is transferred to this location work class via a broadcast receiver, and that broadcast receiver calls this update notification function. This function updates the location data in the foreground notification. This is the broadcast receiver that receives the location updates from the location manager class. Here we unregister the broadcast receiver. Let's run the app. So as you can see, we first ask the user to grant the foreground location permissions. Then we ask the user to grant the background location permission, where the user had to select the allow all the time option on the permission settings page. And finally, we could get the background location. So that's it. That's how you can achieve the background location on the Android device that runs on the Android 12 version. Thank you.